Many times people are prayed for to the laying on of hands of the elders or by whatever you know, person that prays for them and they're not healed. What do you do with that? You pray for 19 more years. No. What does this connect? Uh, there are people who say, well, you didn't have enough faith or you had this gross sin. And, and there's many reasons people have. I myself in my journey when I started representing God, I began to pray for people because I believed what it said in the Word that I'm a son and I should represent the Father in Jesus' name. I believe what it said in Psalm 103, verse 3, that He is a Lord that forgives me of all of my iniquities and heals me of all my diseases. I believe that He is renewing my youth like the eagles, if I'll let Him and not interfere with it. So I believe all these promises, these, and they're absolute promises. But even in, even in praying for people, I'll take it from this side, not to the person who's not received, but it's going to bring us to the same conclusion. I initially, way back years ago, I probably got less than 5% success in praying for somebody, being a doer of the word, praying the prayer of faith, anointing with oil, doing everything I knew to do right. And less than 5% of anyone was being healed when I prayed for them. I don't even know how discouraging that is. Not just for the person who wanted to be healed, but for me. How frustrating it is. I don't know of many spiritual leaders that even believe in healing today, and they're becoming rarer and rarer. Know what to do next. An elder that doesn't know what to do next. A pastor, whoever, when they pray and it doesn't happen. They don't know what to do. I didn't either. So I'm part of the pool of how come? Well, I read a scripture somewhere, I believed. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And God would give it to him liberally, and not braid him not because he asked. You have not because you asked not. So I said, well, if that's true, Father, I'm doing everything I know to do right, and you're not healing them. And I don't know why. I need to know. Well, wasn't too long, words began to form inside of me. I've learned that now to be the voice of the Holy Spirit representing the Father and the Word. And you know, you grow up eventually in being a son or a daughter. If you let yourself, you know, you'll hear God's voice. Not audibly, just impressions and thoughts that come. And I heard God begin to speak to me by His Spirit, the reason why. You know what He told me? He said, Henry, the people coming to you that you're praying for and I'm not healing them. I'm not healing them because I'm not their Lord. I said, well, their church sign says Jesus is Lord. They carry Bibles, they go to church, they pray, they do all the things that most Christians do. What do you mean? And God spoke to me and said, I know they do all these things, but in certain areas of their life, they're following the law of sin, not the law of God. And God said, I cannot honor the law of sin because I would be overthrowing myself in the earth. And I can't do it and I won't do it. I said, oh. Then God spoke something to me that shocked me because I was growing up in a, a, a church previous to that in my, in my journey that said, when you're born again, you're immune to the devil. I was free. And then I heard this thought come to me says, Henry, Satan can have a legal right to my people's lives and they don't know it. I said, are you the devil talking to me? What do you mean Satan can have a legal right to born again believers' lives? Come on. I said, if you're God talking to me, you better show that to me in Scripture. I'm not budging. Whatever voice is talking to me, I'm trying the spirits right now. You're going to show it to me in Scripture, or we're done with this conversation. So you talk that way to God? Yes. Why not? I have a right to. I want to know. Well, the thoughts begin to come. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24, 25, and 26. Would you like to hear them? It's the answer to the riddle. The servant of the Lord must not strive, 
must be gentle unto all men, patient, able to teach. In meekness, instructing those that are oppose themselves. Another rendition says, are actually in opposition to God. That God peradventure will give them repentance. There's that word, repentance to the acknowledging the truth. That they may recover themselves from the snare of the devil. Having been taken captive by the devil, at he the devil's will. That's right in the King James, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24, 25, and 26. There was something in those people's lives that gave the right to Satan to put a disease on them. If I was to help them, and this is early into my journey, I mean, I didn't know the things I know today, but that's where I began. I had to find that thing that they needed to repent for. I remember one time as I was learning my learning curve, I was a pre-med student in my time, I learned a little bit about biology and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and my, my first pastor at a storefront church, I, uh, we're having a, a Monday night prayer meeting and uh, one of our, my parishioners, a young lady and had a husband that had been in and out of problems and she pulled up to the curb and she was on the way to the hospital 15 miles away because her husband was in involuntary muscle spasm. In fact, she said, rather than run to the emergency, I thought I'd come by the prayer meeting first and give God a chance first. And she said, exactly what she said. So I ran out to the sidewalk with her and her husband was in the floorboard, half in the seat, half in the floorboard, in involuntary muscle spasm, shaking like a leaf. What am I going to do with that? I didn't know. But I found myself saying something. I found myself coming against a spirit of fear and I commanded the spirit of fear to stop speaking to him the thoughts that produced this involuntary muscle spasm. And I remember saying something, this is a good story. I remember saying something to, to, to this man in my, in my naiveness perhaps, or maybe not. I commanded the hypothalamus to stop taking information from the brain about what fear was speaking to him in Jesus name. And the minute I said in Jesus' name, the spasms were over and he sat back in the chair. She took him home. He never had a spasm ever again. Never went to the hospital and he was well. I don't know what happened. God did and I asked him, what happened? God spoke to me and said, you're a pre-med student. Get out some of the old textbooks. Look up the word hypothalamus. <laughs> I said, okay. So I dug out an old textbook on anatomy and physiology and looked up the word hypothalamus and I find the hypothalamus is the brain of the endocrine system is a go between between thought and physiology or homeostasis and it processes things like fear anxiety and stress it either brings peace to the nervous system or it produces anxiety in the nervous system I had prayed scientifically accurate and didn't even know it well that was the beginning of my journey into spiritual roots of disease which I'm world famous for today that thing where Jesus is not Lord, that part of a person's life and how they think, speak, or act in which it gives the enemy the right to control us and how we think, speak, or act, that perhaps might help answer the question that I have raised. Is so I've been prayed for and I haven't been healed. Well, Perhaps there's something in your life you need to be discipled in. Perhaps there's something in your life, a dead work, that is making your face shipwreck. Perhaps there's an area where Jesus is not Lord of your life, not Bishop of your soul. It's something to think about, isn't it?